At the end of 2024, Tricentis, the owner company of Specflow, announced its end of life. On December 31st, they shut down the repository, removed it from GitHub, and removed all their documentation from their website. I have been recording a few sponsored videos on this channel about Specflow in 2021, shortly after Tricentis took over Specflow in 2019. Previously, I used Specflow at my former employer between 2010 and 2018 to develop a .NET application with around 50 other .NET developers. I still believe this approach is helpful for certain types of applications, because it bridges the gap between testing business requirements and testing code implementations. With Specflow gone, we now want to take a look at the other available tools in the BDD, the behavior-driven development space for the .NET platform. Luckily, with Rack and Roll, there's a product available ready to use today. Rack and Roll is the direct successor of Specflow. It automates given when then BDD scenarios to verify requirements in your code. Specflow hasn't almost seen any code changes after 2022. In early 2024, Gaspar Nagy, a former developer and creator of Specflow, decided to fork the project and started working on what is Rack and Roll today. Gaspar was forced to change the product's name because Tricentis acquired the naming rights to Specflow with its acquisition in 2019. Of course, it's sad to see that Tricentis wasn't able or couldn't continue development on Specflow after the acquisition. However, I'm sure they tried their best. The contact I had with Tricentis in regards to the sponsored videos on this channel were always professional and you could really notice that they cared about the product back in 2021. However, at the same time, it's great to see that the project has a future, even if it's under a different name. So, what's the current state of the Rack and Roll project? As I already said, Rack and Roll started in early 2024 as a fork of the Specflow project. Meanwhile, in January and February 2025, the version 2.3 has been released. With support for .NET 8 and .NET 9, we can already see the positive development that Rack and Roll has started. Specflow only officially supported up to .NET 7, and .NET 8 support and .NET 9 support was completely missing from the project. Rack and Roll is now fully compatible with Windows, Linux, macOS, and .NET Framework 4.6. 7, 8, and modern .NET versions starting from .NET 6 and reaching to the latest .NET 9 release. Supported test frameworks include MS-Test, NUnit, and XUnit. The popular Visual Studio and JetBrains Rider IDE integration plugins are also ported and are available for using with Rack and Roll. Unfortunately, Closed source projects could not be ported and brought along to Rack and Roll. For example, the widely used Specflow Plus Living Doc Generator is currently missing. However, I read about the tensions to create such a tool in the future from the ground up. However, right now you can only use what's there and provided by Specflow. And there are efforts to make Rack and Roll compatible with the latest version of the Living Doc Generator. Today, it's safe to say that migrating from Specflow to Rack and Roll or starting a new project with Rack and Roll is a great idea. The project certainly has taken a few months to get up to speed, but by now we have stable releases and the product is ready to use. In many cases, searching for Specflow and replacing it by Rack and Roll will take you very far. And for everything else, Rack and Roll provides you with a detailed step-by-step -step migration guide from Specflow to Rack and Roll. I currently don't have any projects using Specflow or Rack and Roll. However, from the tests I made before recording this video, I can tell you that everything looked familiar and worked out of the box as expected. I only scratched the surface of what happened to Specflow and what we can expect from Rack and Roll in the future in this video.
please let me know in the comments if you want me to start a video series where I explain how to use Rack and Roll for your projects and how to get started with behavior driven development. And to learn more about .NET development, consider subscribing to this channel and I will see you in the next video.